Chapter 45, Urinary System Review, Information from Class and the Lewis Textbook. The upper urinary system consists of two kidneys and two ureters. The lower urinary system consists of urinary bladder and a urethra. Urine is formed in the kidneys, drained through the ureters to be stored in the bladder, and then passes from the body through the urethra. The kidneys are the principal organs of the urinary system, and their primary function is to regulate the volume and composition of extracellular fluid and excrete waste products from the body. The kidneys also function to control blood pressure, produce erythropoietin, activate vitamin D, and regulate acid-base balance. The outer layer of the kidney is the cortex, and the inner layer is the medulla. The medulla consists of a number of pyramids. The apices, which is the top of these pyramids, are called papilla, through which urine passes to enter the calyces. The minor calyces widen and merge to form major calyces, which form a funnel-shaped sac called the renal pelvis. The minor and major calyces transport urine to the renal pelvis from which it drains through the ureter to the bladder. The renal pelvis can store a small volume of urine, about 3 to 5 mLs. Each kidney contains approximately 1 million nephrons, and each nephron is composed of the glomerulus, Bowman's capsule, and a tubular system. The tubular system consists of the proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, and collecting tubules. The glomerulus, Bowman's capsule, proximal tubule, and distal tubule are located in the cortex of the kidney. The lupa henle and the collecting tubules are located in the medulla. Several collecting tubules join to form a single collecting duct. The collecting ducts eventually merge into a pyramid that empties via the papilla into a minor calyx. The kidney's blood supply comes from the renal artery and arises from the aorta. It divides into smaller branches and each forms an afferent arteriole. Afferent arterioles divide into a capillary network, the glomerulus. Blood flow to the kidneys is approximately 1,200 mLs a minute and accounts for 20% to 25% of the cardiac output. Urine formation is the outcome of filtration, reabsorption, secretion, and excretion of water, electrolytes, and metabolic waste products. Urine formation begins at the glomerulus, a semi-permeable membrane in which blood is filtered. The hydrostatic pressure of the blood within the glomerular capillaries causes a portion of blood to be filtered across the semi-permeable membrane into the Bowman's capsule, where the filtered portion of the blood, the glomerular filtrate, begins to pass down to the tubule. The amount of blood filtered each minute by the glomeruli is expressed as a glomerular filtration rate, and the normal glomerular filtration rate is about 125 mLs per minute. Tubular function includes reabsorption. It is the passage of substance from the lumen of the tubules through the tubule cells and into the capillaries. The proximal convoluted tubule reabsorbs about 80% of electrolytes. The loop of Henle reabsorbs water. Descending loop reabsorbs water, some sodium, urea, and other solutes. Ascending loop is chloride and sodium. Tubular secretion is the passage of substance from the capillaries through the tubular cells into the lumen of the tubule. Other functions of the kidney is red blood cell production, erythropoietin, and blood pressure regulation. Renin activates angiotensinogen from the liver to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2 by angiotensin converting enzyme. Angiotensin 2 stimulates the release of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex, which causes sodium and water retention, leading to an increased extracellular fluid volume. Angiotensin 2 also causes increased peripheral vasoconstriction. The release of renin is inhibited by the elevation in blood pressure. The ureters join the renal pelvis at the ureteropelvic junction and join the bladder at the ureterovesical junction. The ureters are tubes that carry urine from the renal pelvis to the bladder. The narrow ureteral lumens can be easily obstructed internally by urinary calculi or externally by tumors, adhesions, or inflammation. The urethra is a small tube that incorporates the smooth muscle of the bladder neck and extends to the striated muscle of the external meatus. The primary function of the urethra is to serve as a conduit for urine from the bladder to outside the body during voiding and to control voiding. The urinary bladder is a stretchable organ positioned behind the symphysis pubis and anterior to the vagina and rectum. Its primary functions are to serve as a reservoir for urine and to eliminate waste products from the body. Normal adult urine output is approximately 1,500 mLs a day, and that varies with food and fluid intake. 
The trigone is a triangular area formed by the two ureteral openings and the bladder neck at the base of the bladder. The bladder muscle, the distrusor, is composed of layers of intertwined smooth muscle fibers capable of considerable distension during bladder filling and contraction during emptying. Bladder capacity will vary with individuals, but generally ranges between 600 to 1,000 ml. Evacuation of the urine is termed urination, micturation, or voiding. The urethral vesical unit is formed by the bladder, urethra, and pelvic floor muscles. It is voluntary control of this unit is defined as continence. If the time to void is not appropriate, inhibitor impulses in the brain are stimulated and transmitted back through the thoracolumbar and sacral nerves innervating the bladder. In a coordinated manner, the distrusor muscle accommodates to the pressure. It does not contract. As the sphincter and pelvic floor muscles tighten, they contract to resist bladder pressure. If the time to void is appropriate, cerebral inhibition is voluntarily suppressed and the impulses are transmitted through the spinal cord for the bladder neck, sphincter, and pelvic floor muscles to relax and for the bladder to contract. When the bladder is empty, the sphincter closes and the distrusor muscle relaxes. Physiological changes in the aging kidney include decreased renal blood flow and could be caused in part by atherosclerosis resulting in a decreased glomerular filtration rate. Alterations in hormone levels, including antidiuretic hormone and aldosterone, result in decreased urinary concentrating ability and alterations in the excretion of water, sodium, potassium, and acid. Under normal conditions, the aging kidney is able to maintain homeostasis. However, after abrupt changes in blood volume, acid load, or other insults, the kidney may not be able to function effectively because much of its reserve has been lost. The female urethra, bladder, vagina, and pelvic floor undergo a loss of elasticity and muscle support. Consequently, older women are more prone to bladder infections and incontinence. As men age, the prostate enlarges and may affect urinary patterns, causing hesitancy, retention, slow stream, and bladder infections. Assessment of the urinary system. Question the patient about the presence of history of diseases that are related to renal or other urological problems or trauma. Some of these diseases are hypertension, diabetes mellitus, gout, lupus, scleroderma, skin or upper respiratory infections of streptococcal origin, tuberculosis, viral hepatitis, congenital disorders, and neurological conditions like stroke or back injury. Also note specific urinary problems such as cancer, infections, benign prostatic hyperplasia, and calculi. Assess the patient's current and past use of medications, including the over-counter drugs as well as prescription medications and herbs. Drugs may be nephrotoxic and alter the quantity and character of urine, can change the color of the urine, cause hematuria, or affect the ability of the bladder or sphincter to contract or relax normally. Ask the patient about previous hospitalizations related to renal or urological diseases and all urinary problems during past pregnancies. Inquire about the duration, severity, and patient's perception of any problem and its treatment. Document past surgeries, particularly pelvic surgeries or urinary tract instrumentation like catheterization. Ask the patient about any radiation or chemotherapy treatment for cancer. Inspect the skin for pallor, yellow-gray casts, excoriation, changes in turgor, bruises, and the mouth for stomatitis and ammonia breath odor. Look at the face and extremities. Do you see generalized edema, peripheral edema, bladder distension, any masses, or enlarged kidneys? Look at the abdomen for striae. Check abdominal contour for midline mass in the lower abdomen. This might indicate urinary retention or unilateral mass which is occasionally seen in adults indicating enlargement of one or both kidneys from a large tumor or polycystic kidney. Look for weight gain secondary to edema or weight loss and muscle wasting in renal failure. What is their general state of health? Are they fatigued, lethargic, diminished in alertness? Palpation. The kidneys are posterior organs protected by the abdominal organs, the ribs, and the heavy back muscles. The landmark useful in locating the kidneys is the costovertebral angle formed by the rib cage and the vertebral column. A normal sized kidney is rarely palpable because the spleen lies directly on top of it. The right kidney may be palpable. The urinary bladder is normally not palpable unless it's distended with urine. If the bladder is full, 
It may be felt as a smooth, round, firm organ and is sensitive to palpation. Tenderness in the flank area may be detected by first percussion, which is known as a kidney punch. This technique is performed by striking the fist of one hand against the dorsal surface of the other hand, which is placed flat along the posterior costovertebral angle margin. Normally, a firm blow in the flank area should not cause pain. The presence of a costovertebral angle tenderness and pain may indicate a kidney infection or polycystic kidney disease. Normally, a bladder is not percussible until it contains 150 mLs of urine. If the bladder is full, dullness is heard above the symphysis pubis. A distended bladder may be percussed as high as the umbilicus. The bell of the stethoscope may be used to auscultate over both costovertebral angles and in the upper abdominal quadrants. With this technique, the abdominal aorta and renal arteries are auscultated for a brewery, which indicates an impaired blood flow to the kidneys. Use the diaphragm of the stethoscope to auscultate the bowels because they too may affect the urinary system. A urinalysis is one of the first studies done to evaluate disorders of the urinary tract. The results from the urinalysis may indicate possible abnormalities, suggest the need for further studies, or provide evidence of progression in a previous diagnosed disorder. Although a specimen may be collected at any time of the day for a routine urinalysis, it is best to obtain the first specimen urinated in the morning. This concentrated specimen is more likely to contain abnormal constituents if they are present. The specimen should be examined within one hour of urination. If not examined within that hour, bacteria multiply rapidly and red blood cells hemolyze. Casts, which are molds of the renal tubules, disintegrate and the urine becomes alkaline as a result of the urea splitting bacteria. If it is not possible to send the specimen to the laboratory immediately, it should be refrigerated. The result of a creatinine clearance test closely approximates that of a glomerular filtration rate. A blood specimen for serum creatinine determination should be obtained during the period of urine collection. Urodynamic studies measure urinary tract function and study the storage of urine within the bladder and the flow of urine through the urinary tract to the outside of the body.